Hi there. So in this video, I would like to answer you know, a few questions I have received you know, about differences you now between uh, what I'm showing in these videos and what do people see and what do people actually get. Okay. So basically the main difference, it is related to the Windows version that you are using. So many of the people that ask me, it, they were using Windows 10. So there are a few differences is you are in a Windows 10 machine and Windows 11 machine you, you running WSL. So I will try to address those differences. Okay. But the advice, my best advice is that if you can update to Windows 11, do it. Okay. Not only because of the, you get a better WSL because Windows 11, well, usually it tends to be better than the pre than Windows 10 and any previous auction, but it's up to you. Okay. So the first thing is that you can install WSL following the instructions that you have in the website. So I'm not going into details. Okay. And I think there is no way to get it wrong. Just follow this step and you can install that. So while also reading this one, you will find that there are a few requirements. Okay. So here you have the main requirements. It has to be windows 10 or 11, but the best is in windows 11. You get the best version. Okay. After you install that, you can proceed and install your Linux version. Okay. So this is just installing the kernel that it will let you access Linux and so on, but then you need to install your windows version, the Linux version. So you can go into the windows store and here you look for, I like to look for WSL and it will show you a whole bunch of information. Now, so see here that you have many Linux versions here that you can install. I like to use open source. So, uh, this is the one that I usually install and I'm working right now with version 15.4 and so on. So it's up to you see that you have Oracle and Debian and whatever. Okay. You can also download, install one of these versions and then you can modify it, export it and import it. And then you can redistribute that into your computers. Okay. Just to show you that as you go into our website, see here that you have these links to a virtual machine that it is open source. It's exactly the same. We downloaded this one, which is a clean installation, uh, open source. Sorry, this one is a clean installation. And then you start to install all the dependencies. So here you have already installed everything. So you have two versions, one in .tar and .vhdx. Okay. Both of them work. The difference is that is you are in Windows 10, you can only import this kind or export this kind of version .tar. So this tends to be a little bit slow. So I like to use this one, but this is way much faster, more stable. Know how you export import files now, but the only requirement is that you need Windows 11. Okay. It's up to you. Okay. Or it depends on what operating system you have. And just to show you that these are the files that you are going to download. A .tar, which is a compressed file where you have everything. And then you have the other one is the .bhdx, which is a virtual machine. Okay. Even you can use this in, in another virtual machine software, but use it in WSL that you have a clean integration. Okay. So it's way, it's way, 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 way efficient. Uh, so when you download from our web, web page, by the way, you're going to download a zip version of this one. So you, you download this one and then you need to extract this one to get this. So be careful. So this is one of the differences. Okay. So be careful with that. And also just let me go back to this windows store, because also when you install WSL, I recommend you also to install this, uh, update. Okay. So W windows system for Linux preview. This is only available in Windows 11. If you are in Windows 10, you are not going to see this auction. Later in the video, you are going to see my Windows store and you see that you don't have this auction. So this is a newer version where that gives you no know, more auctions. Okay. And new features. Okay. The features, for instance, new features that now you can import, export this kind of file that is much better. Okay. Also the default size of that virtual machine Okay. And look at that. As you go here, you have this comment here. So as you are working in Windows 10, the default, the default size is 250 gigabytes. Okay. If you are in Windows 10, if you are in Windows 11 and you install this version, the latest one, you can, the default size is one tera. Okay. So you have more storage, but honestly, 250 is good. But even if you need more space, you need to, to go for the newest one. Okay. Uh, also in windows success, you know, the, 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 the documentation, see here that you go, how to expand virtual drive and you can expand that. Okay. And in the same way, you can also shrink it, but, but you see, 
I don't see any reason to, to shrink it because this uh, dynamically grows. You have this one and dynamically as you keep adding files, it will grow, okay? And then if at one point you need to reclaim because you read files and you need to reclaim that space, it's not done automatically. So what you can do is import the virtual machine, export the virtual machine and then re-import it and you reclaim that. That is one way, there are some other solutions, okay? But usually that is not a problem for me. I don't know if if will be a problem for you. So this is another issue, hard drive space and see that you have it here. So if you have Windows 11, it will be one tera. So I think Microsoft needs to update this one or just make this difference, okay? But it will be one tera, okay? Uh, then the other issue that you have is running uh, graphical applications in Linux, okay? So if you go here, uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba, let me go here run Linux graphical applications. So if you are running in Windows 10, you cannot run graphical application. Or yes, you can, but it's not natively implemented. I mean, instead, if you have Windows 11 with the latest patch, it will run, it's a very clean integration. So here, that here you see that you have this big requirement. So another reason just to update. Uh, if you're in Windows 10, there is a way around to do that, okay? It's not a big problem. You need to st install an X server, okay? So there are a few extra steps and you can do it. It's not a big deal, okay? I'm not going to show you, but look for that, okay? Uh, and then there is another issue is working across file systems, okay? And something that basically also a lot of people ask me here that in my videos, I can see in Win this is Windows 11, I can see my, my virtual machine. So see that I'm here and I can access those, my, those directory structures even if I'm not running the virtual machine. So see that you have access to all files, okay? So a lot of people ask me this, okay? And this is something that you only see if you have Windows 11, the latest patch. And let me show you here, I have it already here. So let me go here, minus LV. So see that, and let me, shut down here so one thing that later you will see in the video with windows 10 that see that the machines are not running they are stopped but even though they are not running you still can access files okay so this is very handy later when we move to windows 10 you will see that to see these files that machine needs to be running you need to launch otherwise you can access that and there is some specific instructions how to access because you are not going to see this so basically you have it here you know how to access that okay you can open and explode it there like this or you can go in windows explorer and you type you put that there and you will see all the in windows 10 if you do like this you are going to see all the virtual machines that are running Okay, they must be running. In my case, Windows 11, they don't need to be running. So it's another advantage. The other way also to do it is that, and this is very handy, that in Linux, you can launch Windows programs. Extremely handy, okay? So just to show you. So for instance, now I will enter into Linux. So see that this is my Linux installation and perfectly integrated with Windows. So if I go like this, Explorer, so you, to run Windows commands, you need to give the actual path Okay, in this case, the Explorer is already in the path, so I can access that automatically, but you need to add also this .x, okay? So in that way, uh, Linux will know that this is a Windows program. And then I will put this dot .mini that access the current directory and see that you have there. So this is another way to do it, okay? That will be in Windows 10 and Windows 11, but it's already integrated there. And just to show you graphical inter application, so let me put here Jedit. So this is a, a text editor. This is a Linux text editor. And see that it runs smoothly here. Instead, when you move to Windows set, you, you cannot do this. To do this, you will need to install an X server, so some extra step, okay? So this is the other main differences. But for instance, now talking about pa, uh, pa, open phone, and in open phone, you want to launch part of you. And if you are in Windows 10, you will realize, oh, I cannot do that. Okay, because you cannot run that unless you in install that X server. But there is a way around, and remember, we can run uh, Windows programs in uh, in Linux. So see that in my case, I already installed part of you here, so I will access that file. But just to show you, for instance, in my case, let me open here part of you. So I will launch part of you. Okay. And see that we will run smoothly. You can process your files and everything. But this is Windows 11. 
and with the latest patch, the latest update. Okay, <clears throat> so the first time it takes a little bit. So see that now you have it and you do your whole post processing in the usual way. Okay, so this is Linux. But now what happens is you are in Windows 10 or let's say that you are even here in this version and you don't want to install Paraview. You want to run your, 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 your Windows program. So basically just go here, just find the, the path where this program is installed. So I will copy here, so see. So it is installed there. You go into Linux and run the program. Okay, so if you type enter, it's not going to run, okay? And just to explain to you because the location is, the, is a little bit different in Linux, okay? So in Linux, oops, the drive C is located and you need to know a little bit the directory structure. So it's N NNT C. So here is where you're going to have all that information of drive C. And the same as you have a drive D, you access like this. So see that I have it there. I go in program files. And then if I try to type that command, I cannot do it because I have a white space. Remember that Linux is also a little bit, <clears throat> uh, when it comes to white space, it doesn't like, okay? So you add single quote, and now you can access that, okay? So part of you, now let me go here, bin, perfect, and now, part of you dot exit and see that I give the absolute path because I have this space there. I put my single call this dot because I wanted to open in this current directory. And when you launch, okay, now it's going to access the windows program. Okay. So this is the other way around and see that this is, this is windows. Okay. So this is the windows program that you launch in, in, in using the Linux terminal, but you need to go and install that X server. So this is very handy. Okay. And you might get the idea, any program that you have in windows, you can run it here. So for instance, for those doing CFD and if you have, I don't know, star CCN fluent, whatever you can run it. If you have in windows, you can run it here and you can interact with no problem. So yes, this is what I wanted to show here. Okay. So let me go here out W S L L V and see that. Well, I have the machine. This one is running. Uh, I will shoot it down. Okay. So this is important also just to show you something. So, so, so sometimes I recommend you is you run an application that is in windows into the Linux machine, shut down the, co the, the computer, because sometimes there, there is some information that remains somewhere in the buffer of the computer and can give you problems. Okay. So let me, let me test it here. Let me show you something. So let me try to run here part of it. Uh, okay. So let's see, let's see if it runs. So it says that it's going to run. Also, I recommend you to have a good text editor. So Jedit is already a decent one, but also you have Visual Studio Code and you can install that. And you can install that in Windows, Linux, okay, whatever you like. Okay, there's no problem. Okay, so here it's working. Okay, and now let me go, if I run this one, so this will go the Windows one. Okay, so here give me an error. I know what is the error, but it's not going to tell us that it's something trivial or just apply for my installation. So now if I try to run this one, okay, it's running. Okay. Let me close here and let me open again and let me go part of you. Okay, it's running. It didn't give any problem, but sometimes happen that it's going to give you some strange error here. If you get that strange error, uh, just shoot it down. Go here, shut down, and it will shut down the the, the the virtual machine, and that's all. Okay, that's you solve the problem. So yeah, these are the basic steps. So see here that in you download the image from our website. Okay, and here I install everything and I give in these names. So these are my virtual machine. So let me choose this one. And here I already have, uh, all the applications installed here. So see that you have open phone and so on. Okay. So these are the basic things that you need to know in windows 11. So remember go install WSL, uh, 
or install the latest update, I strongly recommend this. Then also, or if you don't want to, to download our version and you want your Linux clean installation, choose it. I use OpenSUSE, but you have many of them. I know many people like Ubuntu. I really hate it. I don't like it, but well, it's my choice. It's my, my opinion. So yeah, this is all when it comes now to this small detail details that we have you know these differences that are kind of subtle differences but sometimes can can make a difference so let's do a recap what what we talk about so the main issues that you are going to find between windows 11 and, and 10 installation is the gui application so in windows 11 everything runs smoothly even if you want you can run the windows manager and everything there is no problem i'm not showing that here because i don't use it but if you would like to have all this graphical interface you can put it so windows 11 works smoothly in windows 10 you have two options okay you can run the application in windows okay so like i show you part of your explorer or so on or you need to install an x server Okay, I'm not showing that, but you can do it. The other issue that you have is working across file system. Okay, so in Windows 10, to access the files in that virtual machine, you need to have that virtual machine running. And then you need to go into the Explorer, into this specific directory here, or you can launch the, the Explorer directly into your Linux installation. Instead, in Windows 11, okay, you access everything here. You have it here, it's very clean, okay? And there is no need now to, to launch the machine. You can move files across, okay? So uh, that is very handy. And then uh, the other issue that we have difference is about the virtual hard disk size, okay? You can expand it, okay? But if you are in Windows 10 or if you are not using the latest WSL version in, in Windows 11, the size of that virtual machine is 256 gigabytes. But that you can expand following this step. Instead, if you have the latest version, which will be this one here that you see the preview, that size of that virtual machine will be one tera, okay? And just to see here, will be one tera, okay? Which is already 256, it's more than enough, but if you want more, you have it there. But it might happen that you run run out of space. You can increase that. It, ha it hasn't happened. It hasn't happened to me. Okay, but it's up to you. And there are some other very very small differences, but these are the most important ones. So we saw here Windows 11. In the next part of this video, we are going to see Windows 10 the specific. So I'm going to move to another machine. So let's wait a little bit. Okay, so it didn't show, okay, no, it's DF, okay. So see that DF, this one is just 1% one per, one per meaning that this is, okay, uh, one tera. Okay, and you can see all the space in the machine. Okay, so this is all for, for this video, okay. And in the next part that is coming right now, I will move to a Windows 10 machine, okay. So please stay and see you later, bye. Okay, so now I am in a computer with Windows 10 and I want to show you just the differences between uh, what you get with Windows 10 and 11. We'll really review that one, but just to show you. So very important installation. It is exactly the same. So you just go to the website now here and you have the installations instructions. Okay, so I'm not going to details. This is very, very straightforward. After you install that one, remember that now you need you follow here also they give, they're going to give you some recommendations then you need to install the the windows terminal okay so here already installed the terminal preview but you can get it in the windows store you go there search for wsl preview whatever and here you get you have it you will install that and that's all you don't need any anything else when you install wsl by the way it will install by default ubuntu okay but then you can remove it you can decide if you want to have it or you can install any other version of open source so see that all of or linux sorry you have here when you look for that you have open source you have oracle versions and then you have debian version you have many many versions and the traditional ubuntu version so it's up to you to pick up one uh honestly uh, i like to use open source okay but it's up to you but you need to install this one as well you can use 
in our website, you will see that we, we, we have some distributions that we're sharing with the community. So let me go here and I will show you also here in Windows 10, how to import, export Sims. So here we have, um, we go here, Windows Subsistent, and you can download these images. Okay, so we have already images here. You can download any of this, okay? So this is how I'd recommend you to proceed, okay? So let me show you how things work, okay? So now that we have that, let's launch the terminal here, preview. So basically this is a PowerShell Windows. We are still not in Linux, but here, for instance, you can type some basic commands, okay, for WSL, for Linux, so type this one, and see that at this point, I only have this install. I haven't installed so far the one I pointed before, and so on. So you have something very important, this one minus help, and you are going to get the help here. So this is how you use the commands, also you get it in the, in, in the instructions, okay? So I'm going to show you here how to import a virtual machine, okay? Uh, so I invite you to read documentation here. There are many things, but one of the limitations that you have, if you have Windows 10, okay? It's very different between Windows 11. So one of those is that you cannot run GUI applications, okay? So here you see you go tutorials, run Linux GUI apps, now the graphical user interface, and this is tough only works is you have the latest versions of, of Windows 11 and here you have the the prerequisites now so be careful about that that you have Windows 10 you can launch uh, X applications okay however there is a way around you can look for that one you can install at X server and so on and everything will work there is not a problem but you need to do some additional steps so my advice is that if you have access to Windows 11, if you have the option to update, just do it, okay? Because you, 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 you're going to have <clears throat> no, this, uh, this option to run GUI applications. Of, of course, this is you're just interested in WSL and this stuff. The other limitation that you have is you have this version of, uh, uh, is you have Windows 10, is that you are not going to get access to the latest version of WSL. So here, I don't, we don't see it. I show you that when we were in Windows 11, which is WSL preview. Okay, there is another version that you see that you, you don't get access to that. And the advantage of that one is that you have new commands, okay, new functions, but also when you install a, a, a virtual machine, the default is this space is one terabyte, okay? So that is a bigger advantage because in the traditional one, everything is limited to 250 gigabytes, which is not a problem because you can expand the, the space. So here you see expand virtual hard drive this size. Okay, so if you have 250, you can expand it to whatever you want okay so i'm not going to show you this this instructions is as you see here okay this there is no way to to do it wrong the only thing that is going to ask for this to uh for a specific application this one okay and you might need to install this one in your linux installation so if you are using our uh linux distribution we already have it but if you have your own version remember that this you need to install that okay but for the rest it's very straightforward the other thing that problem that you might find is that uh when you have this you can access also the file system. So you are in Windows, but you can access the file system in Linux. So this is another limitation in Windows 10, okay? To access the file system, and here you, you have working across file, file systems. So if you are in Windows 11, all the time you can access the Linux file system, even if you don't launch your virtual machine. If you are in Windows 10, you need to launch the virtual machine to access that uh, file system and then move files. Okay, so that is another limitation. So see here that to see all the virtual machines that you have in your explorer, you can go to this directory. So let me show you that. Now I haven't launched a virtual machine. So if I go here, I cannot access anything. It's empty. Okay, but if you want to access that, you need to launch that uh, virtual machine. Instead, in Windows 11, you always see uh, the, 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 the virtual machine. So just to show you now that I'm here, okay, and I hope we're familiar with Windows Terminal. So now let me launch 
Okay, a Linux instance. So here I only have Ubuntu click here and it will launch. So see that <clears throat> now I in Linux, so it's working okay perfectly in Linux. And if I want to access that one, and as you recall, that is where in Windows 11 you will see here the, the penguin with the Linux and you can access everything here you don't have it in Windows 10. But to get there, just go here. Okay, WS L dollar and that's it now you can move files across file system okay so this is another it's not a limitation but okay you need to do the this restriction no the, this extra uh, steps uh another thing that is very cool about this windows system linux is that you can launch uh, uh windows commands into linux and vice versa so for instance you can open the explorer in linux okay so for instance, I'm in Linux and see that you just type Explorer, you need to add the X extension or the absolute path. And then I want to open in this directory and see that it launched the Explorer and now you can you now move files across. Okay, any application. So for instance, here we're talking about that we have open phone and, and whatever. So remember that, that I mentioned Windows 10, you cannot launch GUI applications or yes, you can, but you need to install an X server. It's a little bit tricky, but it's not a big deal, but you can install part of you in, in open in, in, in Windows. And then you can launch the Windows version here in, in uh, <clears throat> here in Linux. So it would be something like that. I don't have part of you here but it will be something like that and then you can access the files okay so these are the things that i wanted to show you now let me go here okay so let me close this one and as you close this one then you don't have any more access here okay so no more access here so even you can see that one but you don't have any more access there okay uh so wslv okay Okay, so see that, okay, I, you can still, while this virtual machine is running, okay, you can access that one. So you can go, no, double use SL and let me shut down. So now that command will stop it. And now that it's a stop it here, I wouldn't be, uh, I'm not able to access. Okay, so that is the only, let's say, condition that it have to be running in, in order to access uh, in the file, file, file explorer and copy and, and move files. Okay. So now let me show you how to import. So to import, see that in my windows installation, I create this folder here. You can put it whatever you want and I then load the file. Okay. The file that I'm pointing, you know, in our website. Okay. So this is where we have already a virtual machine where we compile all this open from stuff and put some extra images. Okay. But if you want, Okay. Also, you can go ahead and download any of these, install any of this Linux installation and then install all the applications. It's up to you. Nothing changed, but here we're saving, uh, saving you a few, a few steps, not the compilation. So how do we import this? So to import this one, okay. Already covering some other videos of this is just to address some of the many questions I have received. And basically all those questions, is the issues with Windows 10. Okay. So many people. Uh, they don't see what I see because I'm using a Windows 11 and the other people's using Windows 10. So remember that you have here help. And what we want to do is just import and we'll be here. So these are the commands, okay, how you import. So you give a name to that distribution where you want to install that and then the file name, okay. <clears throat> where you have that image. Okay. And sometimes it can take options. So another difference here, windows, you're using windows 10 pretty much you don't have options. Okay. But if you are using windows 11 and the, the latest, in, uh, <clears throat> version preview of WSL, you have options here and you can directly import the VNDX file, which is, I think it's better here. You need to import a dot tar file, a compressed file. So see that. I download it, download it, and I have this star file. But also, you have you no know, the the virtual machine, you no know, the the virtual disk, and you will if you are using the latest version, you, you have the option to import that one, and it's faster. Okay. So for the moment, Windows 10, I need to do it like this. So let me show you. Okay. So again, 
LV and see that the name is this one. Okay, so when you have in the auction uh, here, distro refers to the name. So you give it a name, give give it a name that is different from whatever you have installed. So see that I will go WSL import. I will give it a name. So I will call it I don't know uh, Pokemon Linux whatever. So then. Uh, we look at here let's see the auctions okay bam, 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 bam. okay i'll okay import export imports so uh, okay version okay I'll, i don't see the auctions here w cell install Okay, I need to give the file location. So the file location, I'll recall that I have it here in C, not there. WSL, no. Okay, and this is the file. Then also you need to give the directory where you want to install that. Okay, so I will create a directory here and I will call it, okay, new. Okay, new Linux, or okay, I say I want it Pokemon Linux. Okay, the name doesn't have to be the same as the directory, but just to keep sense, not consistent. Uh, I will go here now, WSL, and I want to put it here. So see that import, give it this name, the tar file is located here, and put everything here. So you press here, okay, okay, the system cannot find it. Pass specify why we will okay it should be the contrary okay my mistake so I should say where I want to install and here it is the location of the tar file okay go and at this point is importing the machine okay so let me go here and open another tab so as you go like this minus L V see that a status is telling you that this one, you are importing this one. It is installing. So it is extracting, compressing and creating some, <clears throat> some aliases and so on. So as you go here, see that it created this director and it's putting there everything. So at this point we need to wait. So usually when you use the, the tar file, it takes time. Okay. It can be depending also on your computer. Okay, but it's something that can be five minutes, ten minutes. Okay, so if you are importing the BDA and X file, so see here that this is you enter. This is the extension that I mentioned. That is, if you import directly this extension, it is way much faster. So I recommend you to work better with this extension. But you need to have Windows 10. So at this point, uh, let's work. Uh, let's wait and see what happens. Okay, so. See you later. Okay, so at this point it's over. So finish importing the virtual machine. So as you go here again, just to check the status, see that it imported. Okay, not running and at this point. You can launch that virtual machine. So you can access that here. Okay, see that I don't see it here because I need to close it and open it again. So close, let me close all and now let me launch again and I should have it accessible here. If for any reason you don't see here, you can go to ses settings and in settings you, 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 you can add the, the virtual machine here, the button. You can add new profile and you can add that profile to the new virtual machine. So as you go here, and there you go. So this is the virtual machine. And for those that are doing, are doing this for just getting open for access, you have it here. Okay. Have in mind that remember that as we are in Windows 10, uh, it is limited to 250 gigabytes. This virtual machine it will grow dynamically. Okay. So when you install that here, 
So see that you have your virtual machine here and you have this space, it's taking this space, but then it will grow dyna dynamically. Okay. So as you put more files, it will grow. And sometimes you put many files and you erase files. Okay. It should shrink dynamically. Okay. But if you are in, you are in Windows 10, it does not shrink dynamically. So usually if you want to reclaim that space, what you need to do is just export. Okay, so you have this one. So exporting is like creating a backup. So you export and then you re-import and when you re-import, it is reclaiming that space. There are some other methods to reclaim. So you can go here, but you said that it's not a big problem. Personal experience, uh, I, I don't do it, honestly. I, I don't recall the last time I, I did that. So my advice here, so go through the instructions. No, you know the limitations that you are in that. <clears throat> Windows 10, you can launch, it's not uh, integrated, no. Uh, the GUI applications, they are not integrated. So if you want to launch GUI applications, no X applications and the access to GPU, all this stuff is not fully integrated in Windows 10. So if you want to do that, uh, <clears throat> you need to install a, an, an X server and so on. Okay, so yes, that is all for, for the moment. Okay, so thank you for your attention and I hope I clarify all doubts now that some people were having that okay I don't see the same stuff that you see in your screen everything depends on the Windows version that that you have and just before ending also recall that also you can access so see that I'm in my virtual oh. machine here and you go explorer then me launch here dot and see that I'm opening a new explorer and now I have access to the files here or the other option, you can op open your explorer and just go like this. And then you can see all the virtual machines that you are running. Okay, so in this case, I'm running this one, but if you start to run another one, you will be able to access those files. So let me go here and see that I let me launch the Ubuntu one. Now that one is running and I should be able to see Ubuntu there as well. And then you can access files here. If you want, you can copy files from Ubuntu to, po uh, to Pokemon Linux, Windows files, and so on. Okay, so that's all. Thank you. And see you next time. Bye.